I'm Enrique Sanchez. I work for a pen testing company in Europe. Uh, basically, what we're gonna do here is just a proof of con uh, proof of concept. Louder. Okay. Like this, you know, like speaking like a man. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of things I want to say before the speech. Is one I like to conduct this more uh, question answer panel. Uh, I unfortunately lost my glasses in a really freak drunk accident. So these guys are here uh, to, if you raise your hand and I, I don't point you, it's not because I don't like you, it's, I, I just don't see you. Uh, you know, I, can, I can barely make his face, I'm, I'm for real. No, I actually managed to lose the glasses in an airport in London. I have no idea how I did it. I think it was like the 15 Guinness. <laughs> I don't know, something weird like that. So first, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand up because I'm extremely short. And I like to be standing up, it's just something with my culture, I guess. Um, fuck you. Uh, he just said stand up. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm Mexican. No green card, dude. Just no green card. I'm just running for the border right after. Yeah, well, I have it right here. Uh, so the thing is, I'm going to show first what's an idea system, because maybe not a lot of people actually do know what's an idea system. This is not the textbook definition, but it's the best thing that I can actually tell you so you will comprehend what's a really basic idea system. It's just a system that will report any activity that could be malicious and can compromise any server or any network in any way. Right. Any questions? Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm not telling you. So, how the uh, how the IS system work? Uh, basically, an IDS system is just a really big sniffer. So, what you have is you sniff the network, which is just read every single packet that goes there. Uh, you filter everything via patterns. This will be a signature-based IDS system. You also have anomaly filters, which is you just have signatures which are anomaly traffic going to your network. Uh, signature is just a filter to say something. It's not really normal to see an FTP password 3,000 characters long. At, at least I really don't know somebody who will put a really long book into his password. So uh, anything over maybe 15, you can do an idea system uh, signature to flag it as an, a possible attack. This is a proactive way. You really don't know in the idea system, you really don't know if the attack actually succeeded. Okay. Uh, Go back, dude. How finish the reports? So the thing is, they also elaborate reports. Why I'm doing this? Because after this, uh, I'm going to tell you what kind of idea systems are out there. This can be divided in host-based and network-based. We're going to be on this one. We're going to be attacking the network-based ideas. Examples of ideas are Snort, Dragonfly. Real secure and on guard 24. You have more of them, of course, but these one, these four, can actually take up on the two selective categories. So, why I say that? What I'm saying right now is an idea system is just like a hack system. Why do I say that? The thing is, the only thing that changes is who is in control of that server. Why? They both sniff the traffic. They both are looking for patterns. The hacker will look for the passwords, the login names, the connections, and you will look for weird connections and you will look for signature-based attacks. And of course, you always have signatures and you have traps and actions that you want to take. In the case of a hacker, if you see a login and a password, you log it to a file. Of course, you can even do more than log into a file. You can actually execute a couple of programs to be able to even get automatically into the computer. If you are on the, an idea system, what you will do, you will probably send an SNMP trap, or you can even do an SMS, or you can do login into a file, send a mail, anything that you want to do. 
is it really that bad that they look like? Not really, because hackers have been pushing the security for years. They are in the front and you're just trying to catch back. That is the reality. Most people don't like it, but that is that way. You have to just be realistic with yourself. So what's this there? Did say, and I put that name not because it's really cool, it's just it's really la it's really long to say distributed intuition detects your system evasion, and I only have one hour. So uh, the thing is, this is just uh, this is a result of just uh, reading through a couple of stuff and trying to think. So what what you do is you do an analysis of the implementation on the network, the host, and the IDEA system, and is the result of the weakness of the link between this. This software will actually bypass, if you have the network characteristics, it will bypass your IDA system, it will not log anything at all. So how does it work? Thing is, an IDS runs on a host. You know? So maybe the IDA system can go to a really high, but you always have a weak link of if your host is not really fast enough, it will drop packets by itself. Those packets can never be seen by the IDS because it's not really on level one. So uh, there are a couple of principal elements that can be attacked on an IDS system. The way they reassemble packets, which will be insertion and evasion, the time of the queue, and signature based attack, and of course the speed of the network. The first three, uh, they have been done and they're usually fairly picked up by IDEA systems. The usual dot attack, fragmentation attack, one bit attacks. So how this, uh, this thing works? Thing is, did you attach the last one? It will do the speed of your network against the speed of your IDEA system. You can implement the fastest IDEA system you can have. You can even go to Giga if you want to. If you have a really slow system and cannot take your network, you will be in serious trouble against this. How do you find, how do I know if I'm vulnerable to this? And uh, I got a little bit uh, tired because it's really hot, so I'm gonna sit down a little bit. Yeah, so I'm short. So. Yeah, well, I'm short, so I get to do this. So what you need to do is just this really simple calculation in which you take how many packets can take your idea system. And I don't mean on the book. I mean, honestly, how many packets can your IDS system take? How many packets can your system take? And how many packets can your network base take? So the thing is, you need to find the wicked link, and that is where your point of breaking is. If your host or your IDS system have a breaking point, uh, breaking point lower than your network, then you will be in trouble. You guys have any questions? Because I'm on. Um, oh, oh, thanks. Uh, told you the, the glasses. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, has to actually go into the network. You can't you can't break it into the into the firewall? Uh, you you can do a couple of tricks. You know, like maybe do like same source port destination like. Uh, Destination port 80, source port 80. So you will force it to to leave uh, to be uh, to be on the IDS queue. So you uh, so the host, you know, the host and the IDS are being fluted. Okay. Or I'm. Re okay. Okay. The smallest packet that you really can send is around 20 bytes. Normally, if you do a normal socket, it will be around 46. You can even do one, but that will probably be blocked by the firewall. You want to make sure that every single packet is going through the firewall. You can, of course, do advanced more things, which I'm going to say, like proxying. But uh, right now, we're going simple. So we want to bypass the, the firewall. Uh, the queue limit for the host can also be attacked, and the queue for the IDS will be attacked. So this is an example. Let's say, for instance, that 50,000 packets is the limit for a host, which is a lot. An IDS system can go up to 20 megabit. 
but the network is a corporate one, so you have a 100 megabit connection. I, mean, I can pretty much see that uh, since you don't have the equal one, you can pretty much see right now that you are probably in trouble right now. So these are the facts and the calculation are, you have 50,000 packets times 20 bytes, not the megabit, just the bytes. So you will get a million bytes. You multiply them by eight, so you get the megabit, so you don't start adding up like apples and oranges. So then you do the translation. You have eight megabits against 100 megabytes. So this idea is, it's in extreme trouble. Actually, if you were on a 10 megabit, you will still be in trouble. So here's how the attack is gonna go. To be sure that we will have enough probability of dropping the packets, we will send 60,000 packets per second, which will be almost 10 megabit, will be 9.6. It means, uh, like I said before, the idea is extremely vulnerable, but this arises the question of how many attackers do have a pure 10 megabit to, to just drop an attack like this on my corporate network. So the solution is you distribute the attack. The hacker goes in there, gets 500 servers. It's the whole internet. I, I'm pretty sure that 500 servers right now is still run the WooFTPD 2.6.0. I mean, if you prove me otherwise, I'll, I'll get you drunk for a week. Uh, so the thing is you end up having only 200 packets per host which is only 32,000 bits. That's a modem connection. So we just added up the whole internet to this attack. So it really doesn't matter if you have a Linux uh, computer running on a modem, the hacker can actually use that to hack into a big corporate network. Well, actually, just gonna leave it here for a while. Anybody has a question? I have, I was thinking, yeah. Are you going to be showing any examples Like working code? Well, not working code, but examples on systems Well, it's just basically, you know, uh, one extreme technique. It's just an implementation. Like, uh, I have working code, but uh, for security reasons, I will not show it. I mean, I have a conscience, I'm sorry. But the thing is, uh, the, the only trick that you need to do is you make sure that everything is load balancing by itself. You can do this by ICMP. You ping one host behind, just you ping the router, or you can even do like TCP pinging. And uh, what you do is you centralize everything on a server, like this laptop. And everything else is reporting, every, every 35 seconds is reporting here. A normal synchronized attack will be five minutes. You let it rip for three minutes, you send the attack, you wait for two minutes, the host will be fluted and it will start dropping packets. I, like I said, it's a, I know it's a fairly simple uh, theory, there's not really a big magic, but every single IDS with the right configuration is vulnerable to this and it's really hard to patch it up. As this, is, this could be implemented even with DDoS tools like Trino, you could modify that. Of course, that, uh, that was on UDP, but you can easily implement it on TCP. I mean, can't see on the back. Yeah. You're good. I'm okay, nobody asking. That's kinda cool, because I'm going too fast now. No, it's okay. So these are the problems that I was, th that I was saying before. It's hard for a hacker to have a head 10 megabit connection all by himself. So what you do is just divide. You really have to think of how much you want to divide. Because managing 500 hosts is not gonna be funny. And of course, it's gonna take you a long time to actually do a program like that. So staying around 200, maybe 300 is the right idea. You could actually implement this as a Linux kernel module you can make it load, you can make it actually listen to magic strings. You can do all, all the right techniques, but the theory is the same. You need to open a socket and send everything spoofed.
I was, I was maybe thinking of doing a real life example with three persons from the audience. The thing is, uh, I got wasted extremely yesterday. Uh, so I, I didn't manage to get the 1,000 papers I was going to hand you. And it's 110 degrees, so I didn't believe that anybody will just stand here. Of course, we can actually try to do it if you want to. Get a couple of papers and scream at each other. So this is the thing. Is it really doable in reality? Like I said before, working code exists. It really doesn't manage the 300 server because it's tight. But I, I've managed to, have to actually make it work on the lab with 50 servers. So shoot me, it's not that bad. So now it's broken. What can I do with this? Well, the solution is easy. You should never go over the breaking point of your IDEA system. I know it's really cool to have a 100 megabit connection, but even in money-wise, did you really need a 100 megabit connection? Most corporate uh, positions don't. Most, most companies don't anyway. You need to make sure that your net, since your network is scalable, that your IDEA system is. All NFR systems are scalable in the hardware area. There's a hardware solution to actually be scalable so you're invulnerable to this attack. You have software, uh, software like SnoreNet, which will also do it on le uh, level, th and level three, you know, like layer, actually, level seven. So it will be a little bit slower, so we, you would end up with a big machine anyway. You need to do stacking and load balancing. And of course, you need to take unusual network picks extremely seriously. You need to configure your firewall wisely. And uh, do, you really, do you really have that much traffic at 3 a.m. anyway? I mean, unless there's a guy just pulling down wires or DVD rips. You're probably not. So that was an extremely fast thing. It's probably because I'm extremely nervous. Do we have any questions? Yes, because the thing is, um, what you actually can do is, OK, he's asking that if I'm going to flood the network so, so bad, if I'm sure that the host is actually going uh, to receive my attack. So the answer is, um, you have a really high probability, because maybe like 80, 85% of the packets, you do not send them to the host, because you want to flood the IDS system. You don't want to flood the host, and you really don't want. You really don't need to send all the packets to the host. The idea is it's going to read them anyway, because it's sniffing the network. I mean, like, uh, how I'm actually making sure I'm getting sixty thousand. Uh, he's asking how, how do I know it's uh, 60,000, how I make sure that every single thing that I'm running is actually getting 60,000 packets into the network. Uh, you can do this with TCP pinging, load balancing. My question, my question is, if your IDS system can go and uh, read only 50,000, yeah. and you're sending 60,000 packets in or 80,000, yeah. what's the difference between the IDS system and the IDS system? And you're doing your attack also at the same time. Yeah. What's the difference between your attack is actually when they drop packets? You're just playing with probability in there. I mean, it's not. I'm sorry? Yes, but the thing is, now IA systems are extremely efficient, uh, but the hosts are not. I mean, I don't want to bash an EOS, but I mean, uh, the one I'm right now, it doesn't really take 10 megabits on the really kind. So uh, yes, you're, you're just playing with probability. The thing is, you only alarm the IDS like five minutes, and you, right now I'm just taking, for instance, 50,000, 
and I'm just going 10,000 just to make sure that 10,000 packets get dropped. If you're going to do this real, you probably have to do it like you said. You probably have to do like even triple to make sure. And even then, you will have maybe like 15 to 20 percent, just to say something on my test. It will get picked up anyway. And uh, this will attack if you don't have an anomaly filter. If you have an anomaly filter of anything going over 20 megabits anyway, this should be picked up anyway. What's the difference in this type of invasion uh, from a single IDS to a distributed IDS? No, no, what, I, what I'm actually doing is distributing my attack. Uh, he's asking if the ISPs or uh, the T1s are doing anything to prevent this type of attack. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is, a, that is the bad thing. Uh, uh, and you really can't handle this, this much. Okay. He's he's uh, he's saying that if if you if you're aware of this, can you handle it in a way that you can block all the attacks? Uh, not really. You can you can spoof every single packet if you want to with random numbers as long as they they are within the internet the routable. So uh, you either let them go through until a certain point, uh, or get yourself ready for a uh, DOS attack. Because uh, if you start if you start blocking every single packet, and I'm going from zero 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 to two five five five, uh, everything is going to be blocked. Uh, yes. Um, there is actually a tool called Stick that uh, does the reverse of this. Uh, it sends so many alarms that the IDS gets uh, full or you really don't know if the attack is there. But the thing is, then you know you're being attacked. This is more of the thinking of uh, you will get a five minute peak warning and you really don't know if somebody attacked you, you had a lot of people going into your web server or or exa exactly what. This is uh, extremely more silent, but it can also be done in the other way. Uh, he's asking if I'm just sending garbage. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I mean, actually, you, you try to be really small packets, just since everything that is, doesn't get filtered for, for the firewall. A couple of tricks you can do. Uh, you can go down to one byte to TCP, so you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to pass the firewall. You go the same source port and destination, and if they have a really bad firewall, you really, really, really want to make the IDS system slow. You spoof the server request with the same source port and destination. So uh, the IDS system is not going to know if the web server is initiated the connection or the outside. So it just has to hold on that until it times out, which is really long. It's only <laughs> so much. That only happens if you are a scene based firewall. Yep. Can you do specific testing against like a multiple different types of firewalls and IDSs? Uh he's asking if I've done it against uh, some IDSs. Uh yes, actually I've done it about all commercials, well, most all commercials that I can get my hands on. This this is not an implementation, this is more of a theoretical thing. It's not really the IDS system fault. I mean, you can go into Higa if you want to. The host is going to break. And if you have a really fast host and the IDS breaks, well. But I mean, I can, surely, I can assure you right now the biggest problem is the host is breaking, at least on my tests.
he's asking, uh, he's asking if the solution is to have a, really, a host really beefy, an idea is really beefy, and then hooking up to the network. If you have a big network, yes, or you can, you can stack your idea systems. You can make it low uh, hardware uh, balance, like NFR, like I said before, NFR has a, an implementation on that. I really don't know if uh, like uh, Real Secure or the other ones actually do have an implementation of that. I know they can load balance on level seven, you know, but I mean, that makes it also slow, so you, you're putting yourself in a position in which then I'm attacking the CPU power that you will have, not only the network. Hold on a second, my man. Okay. Can you repeat the question? Not really. So I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm just here to tell you I, I really don't have all the questions. I, I really didn't try, but uh, I'm sure we can we can give it a try later on. Yep. Uh, he's asking if you're eliminating or reducing the chance. You're actually just reducing the chance of evasion. You, you, you really can't go 100% on, on this. You, I mean, you are gonna get picked up sooner or later. I mean, this is not an uh, old breaking idea system. Just don't, don't go running into your networks and turn it off. There, it's really nice to have it anyway. Yes? Um, he's asking if the idea actually detects anything. It really doesn't. It doesn't detect anything if you don't have an anomaly uh, peak filter. Uh, and the CPU, it goes it goes out a lot, but not really that much. I, I mean, I actually seen it go to 65 percent, but that's it. I never made it go to 100. But that's because it's a small package. No more questions? No, I feel left out. Yeah. Okay, that was a really long comment. <laughs> I, read, I heard half of it, but uh, he's, he's basically saying that you can actually turn the problem around if you have a really fast idea system. What you can do is uh, the ideas will, you, you do two, two things, and the ideas will actually get the first one, and the server will actually get only into the second one. So you will corrupt the TCP reassembly. Any other questions? Please ask more. That's it. That's it? Sorry? Yeah. What solutions handle saturation depth? I, I tested it out. NFR did really well. Dragonfly is extremely fast. Snort really did nice. Uh, also, real secure. Uh, the, the best actually was NFR. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, man. Can you shut it out? I'm really deaf. Man, uh, okay, uh, it, really, it, de it depended on what kind of host I was running, but Windows started dying around to, uh, 15 megabit. Uh, OpenBSD did really well. He went all the way to 28, I think. So it's just a matter of not really the IDS. Uh, like I said before, it's not really the IDS fault. It's right now I'm just attacking the hosts. Sure.
No, I didn't have any around, you know. I'm sorry. Didn't have to didn't have any time to test them. Sure. Uh, uh, he's asking if I, if I tested it on the Cisco IDS. No, no, I haven't actually tested. I mean, get a couple of ideas just to go back and, and go up it. Plus you have a couple hundred thousand dollars, hard to do. Oh, of course, uh, the donations of hardware are really, really appreciated. <laughs> We're not. Limited by the bottlenecks of the host on that. Yeah, but the router can breach really nice. Yeah. Any other questions? Because I see people leaving anyway. No more questions? Uh, the slides are going to be at this, uh, uh, this URL. If you have any questions, rants, flames, anything, uh, that will be my email. I, I do check it at least three times a day, so you will get a response back. I can actually tell you about that. No spam, please. What? No spam. No, just no spam, man. Hold on. That's it.